Welcome, my name is Jeff Bartles. I'm an infrastructure technical specialist here at Autodesk, and today we're going to look at how we can get started modeling pressure networks in Civil 3D. On screen, you can see the agenda for today's session. We're going to start out at the beginning. We'll look at how we can create a parts list. The parts list is used to hold the pressure network components that we will use to model a pressure network. Parts lists represent a subset of the overall collection of components that come with all of the part catalogs that are installed with Civil 3D. We'll look at how we can use the catalogs to build a parts list for our project. We will then look at how we can use that parts list to develop a pipe run. The pipe run methodology is new to Civil 3D 2021 and above. Prior to Civil 3D 2021, pressure networks were built just as a collection of individual components. Being that our pressure networks are now considered runs, they are built on an underlying alignment and profile, which makes them much easier to edit both horizontally and vertically. Once we learn how to create pipe runs, we'll look at how we can connect pipe runs together because you can have multiple pipe runs within a pressure network. We'll also look at how we can edit that underlying alignment and profile to modify the horizontal geometry of the pipe run as well as the vertical in the event we want to create lowerings and things like that. And then finally, if you'd like more information about this topic, I'm going to leave you with some additional resources. Now, I have to admit, I'm not a big fan of PowerPoint, so instead of showing a bunch of screenshots and bullet points and discussing theory, instead we're going to work live within the application. So I'm going to drop out of this. As you can see, I am working in Civil 3D 2023.2. Having said that, the majority of what we look at today is going to work for you so long as you're using Civil 3D 2021 and above. The reason I say majority is because the new pipe run functionality came out in 2021. And since then, there have been some minor tweaks to the workflows. So depending on the version of Civil 3D you have between 2021 and 2023.2, you may see some minor nuances in the workflows. Okay, we're going to start out by building a parts list. We build a parts list from the available part catalogs that Civil 3D comes with. To build a parts list, we first have to start by selecting the catalog. Here on the Home tab in the Create Design panel, I'm going to expand this and I'll choose Set Pressure Network Catalog. And if I expand this, you can see the six catalogs that come with Civil 3D. Consider these a starting point. It's kind of like you're going shopping for the parts that you'd like to use for your pressure network. Well, I'm going to start with the push on catalog and I'll click OK. Now, to build a parts list from that catalog, I'm going to go to the settings tab and then I will expand pressure network. And if I expand parts lists, you'll see there's, I've got a parts list in here already. I'm going to create a new parts list just so we can demonstrate that. I'll right click on parts lists and I'll choose new. And on the information tab, I can give this parts list a name. I'll call it my parts list. Down below, you can see the catalog that we are shopping from for our pressure network components. When we build a parts list, it is organized into these three tabs, pipes, fittings, and appurtenances. Pipes represent pipes of various diameters and materials. Fittings represent the items that connect pipes together, like elbows, T's, crosses, things like that. And appurtenances are the other items, like gate valves, air release valves, hydrants, pumps, things like that. So let's build out our parts list. I'm going to start here on the Pipes tab, and then I will right-click on the new parts list, and I'll choose Add Material. And within the catalog that I'm looking at, the push-on catalog, you can see that I only have one material. I kind of think of the material as a family. I'll choose ductile iron. I'll click OK. I've just added that material or that family to my list. Now we'll add some sizes. If I right-click on this, I can choose Add Size. And notice in the dialog box, we can see the nominal diameter by default here is 4 inches. If I click inside this field a couple times, you can see the various sizes that I can select. So I can choose the individual sizes I want, and I can click OK to add them to my parts list. Or since we don't have a whole bunch of them in here, I could just say add all sizes. Note, before I do that, there are some other items here that are editable. I could adjust the cut length here uh, so that it's a little bit different than what's coming from the catalog. I can also adjust the allowable deflection if I wanted to. We'll look at some ways to edit the part catalog in a little bit. For right now, let's just add all the sizes. I'll click OK. And if I expand this, you can see here's the sizes that I brought in with respect to the ductile iron family. Here's the sizes, and then I've got a column for the style. The style is what controls the appearance of these pipes when they're viewed in plan, profile, cross-section, or in the 3D view. 
We also have a column for render material if we want to assign that, and we have a column for pay item. In the event you have a pay item list associated with your Civil 3D file, you can apply the various pay items to these components such that as fast as you create the pipe runs and pressure networks, you'll be able to extract a summary of quantities. Let's go to fittings. I'm going to right click on the list and choose add type. And you can see I have three types or three families in here, crosses, elbows, and T's. I'll click OK. And if I expand this, I have added those families to my fittings tab. I can then right click and add sizes, just like we did with the pipes. When it comes to the elbows, we have the nominal diameter. You can see that we have several to choose from. I also have several bend angles to choose from. Since there's not a lot of them in here, I'm going to click add all sizes and I'll click OK. If I expand the elbows now, you can see my elbow options. Depending on the, the number of items that you need to pull in here, if there's certain diameters that you typically don't go above, might not be bad rather than just going through and picking all of the smaller ones. You can always delete. If you right click, you can choose delete. Likewise, if you select one of these, hold your shift key, you can select a grouping of them and you can delete them in bulk. Okay, so not bad to add them all. You can just delete the ones that you don't want. And we would go through this same workflow for T's and crosses. We'll just say add all sizes. And you can see all the T's. Because you can do the same thing, assign the style, render material, pay item. Let's go to appurtenances. I'm going to right click on appurtenances, add type. And with this particular catalog, I have just a couple of valve families. I'm going to add both of these just so that we can see what those look like. Let me right click and I'll choose add size. And I can see for the 150 PSI family, I pretty much just have three size choices. There they are. Add size. Got quite a few more. Oh, no, six, eight, and 12. There we go. You can see the sizes for those. Now, we don't have to limit ourselves to pulling components from a single catalog. If I go to the Information tab, I can come down and load a new catalog. For example, let's choose the PVC catalog, and I'll click Open. Note that this catalog is loaded, but it's not yet in use. I have not pulled parts from this catalog and put them in the list. That's why this one says in use and it's locked. I can't unload a catalog where parts have been pulled into the parts list. Okay, that's the difference between the icons here. If I go to fittings, for example, let's clap some of these. If I right click on the parts list and choose add type, if I select the PVC catalog, you can see that we have additional options, things like reducers and plugs and T's and caps. Let's add the reducer family there. And then I can add sizes. Okay, workflow is similar. If I go to appurtenances, if I right click on the parts list and go to add type, if we go to PVC, you can see that this particular catalog also includes hydrants that are organized by their berry depth. Okay, so we can create a parts list or a subset of all of the components of all of the catalogs. The parts list represents the parts that we typically use on our projects. Parts lists are saved as part of your template. That way, when we create new designs, we have the parts that we use most often. You can always go and add to a parts list later. By having the parts list, we are not having to carry the full weight of all the catalogs when we're doing our design selection. Okay, I'm going to cancel out of this because I've already got a parts list here. Let me right click and I'll go to edits. I just want to show you what's in here. On the pressure pipes tab, you can see I've just got the sizes for ductile iron. I have several sizes for elbows, crosses, and T's. And under appurtenances, I've got those two gate valves and I've got a hydrant in here as well. Okay, so my parts list has been created. If I would like to draw a pressure network, here in the Create Design panel, I will expand the Pipe Network menu item and I'll choose Pressure Network Creation Tools. This is the command that I run to not only create a pipe run, but this will also create a brand new network. Since I have not drawn any water main in this project so far, I'm going to use this to create the new network. I will call this water. I will then give my pipe run a name. We'll call it my first run. I can select my desired parts list. When you choose the parts list, you can then see the available pipe sizes. I've only got the one family. If I had multiple families, I could choose from those. I'll choose the 8-inch size. 
Here's where you could select your layers, the object layers for the various components of the pressure network. You can select these or have them chosen in the template, or you can take and assign those yourself. I'm just going to keep the defaults in this case. The reference surface. When we place the pressure parts, we want those to have a particular depth below ground. So what surface do you want to measure that from? This surface right here is called demo. So I'll choose that. I would like to create a surface profile to follow the demo surface. This profile will be used to edit the elevations of the pipes later. So I want to do that. And I also want that to be dynamic to that surface. That will happen automatically. For the cover depth, I'm going to set this to five and a half feet. That's typical for Illinois, where I'm at. The reference alignment, I don't have a, an alignment in the adjacent area here, but in the event you were placing this water main parallel to a roadway alignment and you wanted the station and offset labels of your water main to be tied to a particular alignment, here's where you could select that alignment. I could also choose if, as I draw this, if I would like to automatically label the pipes, the fittings, and the appurtenances. I'm just going to leave those turned off for right now and I'll click OK. And then I can draw my pipe run, much like I can create a polyline. I clicked my first point on screen. Civil 3D then finds the elevation of that demo surface and it drops down five and a half feet. I can then click my next point and then it displays this compass. This compass allows me to snap to the available bend angles defined by the parts that are in my parts list. In my parts list, I have elbows with an 11 a quarter, the 22 and a half, 45 and 90 degree bends. In the event your parts list only had elbows that had 90 degree bends, those would be the only snap options that you would see. So just want you to understand where the snap angles are coming from. Let me pick a couple more points here. When I'm finished, I'll press enter. And you can see that my pipe run is created and the applicable elbows are placed based on the snap that I was using on the compass. Now, I would like to label these. I'm going to go to the annotate ribbon tab and I'll click the price tag here. For the feature, I will choose pressure pipe network and I would like to label a single pressure part in the plan view. Let's just label these elbows. I'll zoom in and I'll click this one, this one, and this one. And you can see how those were placed based on my snap. I've got nice dimensions on those. If I select the pipe run. You can see that the grips are very similar to what we see with an alignment. That's because it's built on an underlying alignment. In fact, if I right click, you'll see alignment properties here. If I may press escape, if I hover over these PI grips, we see the same alignment properties. The reason why this is nice, if I click one of these grips and I make an adjustment, you can see how the angles of the elbows will update. It will take and add the appropriate closest elbow based on the adjustments that I'm making. In addition to being able to drag these PI locations, I can also insert new ones. If I come back to my contextual ribbon here, there's an option to add a bend PI. I can click where I'd like to place the bend. Not only does it place the bend, it places the appropriate fitting. Let's take and drop a label on that. So 22 and a half. And then as I drag this, we'll see how that elbow changes. In addition to adding the PIs, we can take them away. So you can see I can choose remove bend PI. If I click near this, it takes away the PI and it takes away that fitting. Let me press escape a couple times. Let's look at another thing. Maybe I would like to add a valve along this line. Here in the layout panel, I will open up a pertinence because that's where the valves are located. This is an eight inch pipe. So I will choose eight inch gate valve and I'll click add a pertinence. I will then move my cursor close to this pipe and you can see the boxing gloves or the glyph that shows me that if I click, it's going to add that item to this line. If I zoom in, note that if I click this pipe run one time, I get access to these alignment grips. So if I move this, Historically, in older versions of Civil 3D, it would pivot right here at the valve. It no longer does that. These valves now stay in line. If I select this pipe run a second time, this gives me access to the individual components. That's the trick. Now that I've selected this a second time, you can see I've got the grip here on this valve. If I click this once 
and then twice I can right click and here's where I get access to the appurtenance properties style. I can swap these out, things like that. Okay, let's come over here. Let's say I wanted to add another pipe run. We can have more than one pipe run in a pipe network. So since my contextual ribbon is open, I can add another pipe run by simply opening the menu here and choosing create new pipe run. Let's do this though. Let's assume the contextual ribbon's not on screen. If you remember when I drew this pipe run, I opened up pipe network and I said pressure network creation tools. This option creates the pipe run, but it also creates a brand new network. I don't want to create a brand new network. I want to create multiple runs under the same network. Think of a pipe run as being kind of a branch in the overall network. So I would like to make these all part of the same network. So I won't use that option again. If I would like to add a new pipe run, I can select an existing pipe run which will bring back the contextual ribbon. And then from here, I can add a new pipe run. Or second way, if I go to the prospector tab, if I expand the pressure networks category and expand my network, right here, we can see the pipe runs that are in that network. Just have the one. If I want to add another pipe run, I can right click right here and I can say add pipe run. I'm going to do that. You can see it's adding that pipe run to the same network. I'll call this my second run. I can give it a description. You can see it's keeping the same settings what we had before. Let's do a different diameter this time, maybe 14 inches. And then uh, same demo surface, five and a half feet below. Let me click OK. And then I will click maybe here. And then we'll click here. And that's as far as I want to go. I'll just press Enter. So I've got a 14 inch pipe. Maybe I would like to make a connection. If I select this first pipe run, you can see I have three grips. If I click the square grip at the end, it's much like I'm grip editing and alignment. Okay, if I bend this, it will change the elbow. If I click the plus, it will bring up the compass and it will allow me to continue on and it will also place a fitting there for me. If I click the arrow, I can use this to lengthen or shorten this pipe. If I pull this out such that I get close to this pipe, you can see the boxing gloves there. Let me click and it places the appropriate fitting. Now, what if these pipes were at different elevations? In the event we're working with a T, it will hold the elevation of the through pipe. The connecting pipe, the elevation would adjust to meet the elevation of this through pipe. Let's do this. I'm going to click the script and I'll pull it back. What if we had a crossing? Let's drag this over. In the event we had a crossing and we wanted to add a, a cross connector here. I can do that using this add branch fitting option. If we're dealing with a crossing, it's going to ask me to select the pipes in the order based on which depth you want to hold. So it says select the first pipe at intersection. If I click this pipe first, that's the depth that's going to hold. When I click the second pipe, that's the pipe that it's going to edit to insert my connector. Okay, let's apply a label to this. Just want to show you a little trick here. If I select this once, and twice, there's my cross. I'm going to come over to the properties palette for a second. Notice the nominal diameter description. We can see that listed here. Can't change it. Okay, it's grayed out. Let's say I'd like to label that part. That's a fitting. Now I'm labeling it with a T, but really T's and crosses are going to have the same label style. Let me click add, and then I will click this object. And then I will click the label, and we will click the script, and we'll pull it out. As you can see, the label style that's used for this particular cross, it's labeling that nominal diameter attribute. Okay. If I, I think I can close this now. If I select this cross and go to the properties palette, once again, I can't change that. The label's fine. It's accurate. It's just a little bit longer than I would like. Maybe I just like this to be cross 14 X 14 X 8 X 8. So I really can't edit that here. You can see that there is a description here. It's actually even longer that describes this part. And this is, you can see I can type in here, this is editable. Okay, so if my label style pointed to the description, I could manually edit that text here, but I don't really want to do that for every single fitting and appurtenance and item in my pressure network. So let me show you a shortcut. I'm going to come down and click the Windows button, and then I will select Autodesk Civil 3D 2023. Inside here, you'll find an application called Content Catalog Editor. This is installed with Civil 3D. This is used to edit your pressure network catalogs. If I go to Open, you can see the same 
catalogs that we saw earlier. Now, in the event you don't see these right off the bat when you go into the application, I just want to show you the folder where these are stored. Program data, Autodesk, C3D 2023 ENU pressure pipes catalog, and I'm looking at the Imperial version. There's also a metric version. Let's choose the push on catalog for a second and I'll click open. And when I open the catalog, we can see the families, if you will, that have content. If I expand the cross, you can see the two families there. 350 is what I think we're looking at. And if I open up this, this is where I have access to that description. Okay. Editable. So I can make these say whatever I want. If I drag this over, if I drag this over, you can see the nominal diameter. These are editable. Notice the number of attributes in here that are unpopulated currently. Everything from branch angle to ID coding inside, coding outside, schedule, SDR, series, strength class, all of the items. If you go through here and populate these, these are things that can participate in your labels. So they're, they're not heavily used in the catalog right now, but if you wanted to, you could go through and edit the values here and add to them to have even more power with your labeling. Having said that, I'm not going to make the changes here right now. I don't even think it would let me save my catalog in this case because the catalog is already, it's, it's, it's in use right now in this drawing. I would likely have to close out of Civil 3D in order to be able to save this because this may be in a read-only state at the moment. But that would be a, a shortcut. If you edit the properties in your catalog and then build your parts list from that, that will help you with your labeling in the future. In the additional resources that I'm going to give you at the end of today's session, there will be an Autodesk University recording that provides demonstration for how to edit your parts catalog and even more hyperlinks that will show you more hardcore ways you can get in and make changes to your catalogs. So I just wanted to show you that that's there. I'll make it out of this. Okay, now that we understand how the pipe runs feature works, let's look at how we can use it in a practical example. I'm going to zoom out, and on screen we have a portion of a subdivision. and. If I hover, you can see I've got a surface here called composite for some of these roads anyway, like the roads through here. I've got a proposed road surface and I've got that pasted into the existing ground surface. That pasting was used to create a composite surface. That way I have one surface for the entire thing. Now, I don't have a proposed surface for this roadway yet. This road, I think, is called East Court. That's all right for this example. Just wanted to mention that the surface that we're using. If I'm going to create a pipe run along this, my contextual ribbon still open. Let's go to add pipe run, great pipe run. I'm going to call this East Court Water Main. Parts list is going to be water, eight inch surface. I'm going to come down from the composite surface, five and a half feet. Reference alignment. In the event I wanted to label these components with stations and offsets to the center line of the roadway, I can choose that alignment here. Let me click OK. And now I can draw my components using that compass. So I'll come down here and click. And when the compass is up on screen, if we come up to the contextual ribbon and expand the compass panel right here, we can control the color of the compass and the diameter. In the event, this is a little bit bigger than you would like. Notice there's an option to turn the visibility of the compass off. There's also a snapping feature here. We can turn the snapping off. Back in the old days, this was very rigid. You could only snap to these predefined angles. Problem being, I'm allowed a certain amount of deflection at each one of these angles, and it just didn't allow me to do that. If I turn the snapping off, I can see the angle still, but I can kind of deviate from that a little bit. Make things easier. Maybe we'll go here. And then maybe I'll take this down to here. When I'm finished, I'll press enter. So there's my water main. Works just like the other one. I could select this. I could grip edit it. I could label that. The pieces would update. Maybe I'd like to add a hydrant. We saw how we could connect to a pipe run. I can also connect from a pipe run. We'll create another one. Create new pipe run. I will call this hydrant 01. You can name these whatever you like. Once again, think of each run as being a branch in the overall network. I'm going to go with a six inch pipe. Same surface, same cover, same reference alignment. Let me click OK. I will then click to start at this pipe, and we'll take this towards the uh, property corner here. And I'll press Enter. 
it automatically puts the appropriate T in there. Maybe we can add a six inch valve now, add a pertinence, take and drop that in, and then we'll expand this and I will add a hydrant. Perfect. Once it's been added, let's take a look at it in 3D. I will click once, which gives me the alignment. Click it again, which gives me the hydrant and the pipe and this valve. I'll right click and choose object viewer. And then we can tip this up and view it in 3D. So you could add additional valves or appurtenances, whatever your design requires. That's basically what the workflow looks like. Now, in addition to creating pipe runs based on the compass or drawing them manually, we can also create pipe runs that are based on existing geometry. This will work with an alignment, a polyline, or a feature line. Let's assume I would like to create a pipe run that is parallel to this roadway, West Street. I'm going to come up to the textual ribbon and I'll say create pipe run from object. I will then select this alignment. And remember, the pipe runs are built on an underlying alignment, so we're going to see a lot of the same options that we have when we create an alignment. I've got the direction there. I'll say that that's okay. Creating this pipe run under the same water network. We're going to call this, I think it was called West Street. Let's come down here. Yeah, West Street. So my reference alignment, if I'm labeling the station's offsets, it's going to be the same one. So let's come up here. Pipe run is going to be called West Street Water Main. We'll go with an eight inch pipe. We're going to be going under the composite surface, but we're going to create that surface profile. Now, horizontal offset distance. Since I'm building this pressure network from an existing object, if I leave this set to zero, it's going to put it right down the alignment. I can put a positive or a negative number here to create an offset. Negative number will put it to the left, and it's based on the direction of the pipe run, not necessarily the direction of the roadway alignment. We'll see an example of that here in a little bit. In this case, they're both running in the same direction. So if I want this to the left, I will say negative eight feet. Cover five and a half feet. Now, since we are building this pipe run from a selected object, in the event that object was at elevation, like a feature line, I could come down here and say use uh, vertex elevations, and I could say that feature line represents the outside top, the crown, the center line. You can see some of the other options here. For right now, I'll just choose the cover of five and a half feet, and I don't want to erase the existing object. I'll click OK. There's my pipe run. Let's create one for this roadway. This is Long Street. Now with Long Street, the stationing is coming from the east to west. I'm going to create another pipe run here. Create it from object. Notice the direction. Doesn't have to be the same direction, so I can have this going the other way. Let me click OK. We'll call this Long Street Water Main. And then I want this to tie to the long street alignment, center line alignment. I would like to put it to the left. So this is based on the direction the pipe run goes. So I'll say negative eight feet to put it on this side. And I'll click OK. And then I can click here, grab the triangle. I can pull this over and make my connection. I can now go through and I can add additional PI locations. I can add valves and appurtenances wherever I need them to finish building out my water main design. So we've kind of talked about how we can do this from a horizontal perspective. Let's talk for a second about vertical. For the vertical, we're going to look at the example here. I've got this pressure pipe run East Court water main. When we draw or when we create a pressure network, the elevations by default of the cover depth is measured from all of the endpoints or the bend points, each place that you click. Let's see that. I'm going to select the pipe run and then from the contextual ribbon, if I wanted to draw this in a profile, you can see that we've got the classic option here, draw parts in profile view, so we can still do that. We also have this pipe run profile. This allows me to create a pipe run profile view right down the utility itself. And there's the pipe run name. By default, it's going to be doing the offsets at the bends. Here's the reference profile. That's the surface profile composite that it's going to be maintaining that dynamic relationship with. In the event of the composite surface changes, the elevation of this water main will update as well. And I would like to draw that in a new profile view. So this pipe run offsets at the bends, which is what it is currently. It's using the same composite. 
and let's draw it in a new view. Let me click OK. Since I'm drawing a new view, it's going to be creating a profile view just like it does for other profile views. I do want to make a couple edits here. If I go to profile display options, you can see that there will be two profiles displayed in this view. There will be the profile that represents the grips that I can use to edit this vertically. Notice there's no pipes options in here. The appearance of the pipes is going to be based on the styles that are assigned in your parts list. And then this is the profile of the existing ground. I'd like to draw both of those. And then I'm going to come down. I want to change the profile style for the ground. And I don't need labels on these, so I'm going to select both of those. And I'll click and I'll say take away the labels. Now, if I do come down to pipe pressure network, I can see here's where I can select the pipes and the fittings and the appurtenances that are going to display in this view. Once again, though, the appearance is controlled by the styles that are assigned in the parts list. Let's use create profile view and I will click over here. So there's that pressure network underground. If I select this one time, just like we saw in the plan view, if I select it one time, you can see the profile. You can kind of see that magenta line. That is the style of that profile. I made that a little bit different just to make it easier to see. Notice that we have profile grips. We can adjust the PVI. We can also adjust the, the grade in and the grade out. So it makes it very easy to edit. Also notice it is setting that five and a half foot cover depth at each of the bend locations. So it's a little closer to the ground here, a little farther away here. Since we're dealing with an existing surface, you can see it's just measuring right there. And then it's a straight shot to the bend here. If we wanted this to better follow the ground, since my pipe run is selected, I'm going to go back to pressure network plan view here and I'll choose pipe run profile. And let's flip this to cut length. And I'm not drawing a new one. I'm just going to say update the one that we have. When I click OK, you can see how that updates. Now the styles that I'm using for my pipes are displaying the end lines. So it's showing me the cut lengths that are defined from the parts list. And now it's measuring that five and a half feet at every cut length. It's deflecting the pipe at each of those cut lengths. Let me drag this over. If I select this, basically I have more PVI grips. Historically, we used to have multiple PVI grips along the individual pipes, which made it cumbersome to edit these vertically. Now, since we have a nice PVI grip at each cut length, I can make very easy edits to this. As an example, I'll click the grip here. I can pull this down. I can click the grip here and pull this down. And I'll press escape. Let's zoom out a little bit. And let's look at what we really did by adjusting those grips. If I select the pipe run here in profile and go to pipe run profile, basically I've said I want it to follow this surface. Okay, five and a half feet below, and I'd like it measured at the cut lengths. Notice there's an overrides tab here. And there's a single override. If I select that, you can see overrides. This is where I've gone through and manually adjusted things. So from now on, if this surface was to change, the pipe network would update in this area, but it will hold the adjustments that I've made or the overrides I've made in this area. And we can delete overrides if we want. I could select that and click the delete button, click OK. You can see that'll go right back the way it was. The reason I show you that is because this can be used to create lowerings. Real quick here, I'm going to simulate a uh, pipe crossing or utility crossing. We'll say that's maybe a sanitary sewer or something like that that we have to deviate around. If I select my pipe run, I can very easily click these grips and I can pull this down. And you can create a geometry here with the appropriate slopes and the appropriate, maybe it's 18 inch difference here. I'll, I'll leave that up to you. Just want to show you that very easily I can grip edit these. I can use the grips here to hold the grade coming in, going out to create a lowering. And I just applied a, basically I applied an override. When you make adjustments like this, the pipe is deflecting at each of these locations. If you wanted to place a fitting, at those locations. Let me select this. And from the contextual ribbon, I will choose add bend PVI. And I'll say I want to add an actual bend to the profile, which will which will put the appropriate elbow or the appropriate fitting at that location. There we go. Let me press escape. And if I zoom out, let's come over here. I will click once. I will click a second time. 
We'll window these and then I'll right click and choose Object Viewer. And we'll just pull these up in 3D. So you can see there's the lowering with the fittings. Let's pan this back over. So very easy to create lowerings now. We do that as an override. Let's dial things up just a little bit more. I'm going to launch the copy command and we'll copy this. Maybe we'll come down here and we'll put one here and maybe we'll put one here. Let's say I need to deviate around these two. Maybe these are crossing elements, sanitary sewer, storm sewer, something like that. I can create my lowerings as a profile. If I select the profile view and go to profile creation tools, I can create a simple 3D profile for this. I can call it uh, lowering A. And I don't need labels on this. I can then draw this. Maybe we'll start nearest to here. So we're not doing it right at one of the cut lengths. And I could use the transparent tools if I wanted to draw this at a particular slope or grade, draw it to a particular elevation. Once again, I'm going to leave that up to you. Just showing you that you can create your geometry for your lowering. We'll take this up to maybe nearest to here. Perfect. Let's close this. Now, if I select my pipe run, if I go to the pipe run profile and go to overrides, I can create a new override. Starting station will be the end point here. End station will be the end point here. And in this area, I would like to follow the lowering A profile that I created. I would also like the distance below that. I almost always forget this. You can see if that's five and a half feet down, it's going to try and draw this five and a half feet below my profile. Since I want that profile to represent the top of the pipe, I'll set my distance to zero. I will then choose clean up PVIs and I'll click OK. And you can see how that pulls it down. Now, I can, if, if I'm going to add fittings, I can do this. Let me choose, we'll select this and I'll do add bend PVI. Since we did it in the middle of a pipe, I can say I want to add a bend right there. There's my fitting. I want to apply a bend right there. There's my fitting. And I could put other ones on here. Or I could have used the grips and I could have pulled those over if I just wanted to show these as deflections as opposed to having an actual fitting there. Okay. I don't know if I touched on this. Just want to make sure. If I select the pipe run and profile to get access to the profile object, select it a second time. Now I have access to the individual components. Okay. Works the same way. Let me go ahead and close this. All right, dangerously close to the end of the session here. Let me bring this back. Today, we looked at how we could get started modeling pressure networks in Civil 3D. We looked at some of the new functionality, some of the things that have been added since 2021. We talked about how we could create a parts list or a subset of the overall catalogs that come with Civil 3D. That parts list represents the tools that we use most often when we're generating pressure network designs. Parts list is stored in the template for easy use with all the drawings that we create. We also talked about how we could generate pipe runs. The pipe runs represent branches in the overall water network. We can have more than one run within a network. We can connect those runs together, and the runs are based on an underlying alignment and profile, which makes it very easy to edit the geometry and the fittings both horizontally and vertically. If you get a chance to use this feature, don't assume it has to be used for just pressure networks. Several types of utilities that you may want to model are based on depth of cover. Things like gas main or fiber optic line, you could kind of hijack this feature to model some of those items as well. When it comes to the additional resources, I just want to share with you a couple things. I will have the links for these in the description for this video. I've got a link here to the Autodesk University online site. If you go here, you can access Autodesk University classes from prior years, not just 2022, but it goes back several years. There's a search feature right here. You could do a search for pressure network. You could do searches for other topics or other workflows with respect to Civil 3D or any other Autodesk application. There is a wealth of information available here. And in the Autodesk University Online site, one of the recommendations I would make is to take a look at this class that was done in 2021 by Charlie Ogden. I'll select the hyperlink. This was found just using the search feature in 2021 with the new pipe runs. Charlie gave a presentation on this. 
You can watch the video right there. He also includes the presentation and the handout. I show you this because Charlie walks through some additional ways that you can edit your part catalogs, and he also includes links to other resources that will give you even more information if you'd like to make hardcore edits to those catalogs. Civil Immersion blog. Myself and a couple other technical specialists have put together this blog, and over the last several years, we have posted hundreds of how-to workflows for many of the civil infrastructure applications in the AC collection. Once again, another wealth of information. If you visit the blog, you can see that each of us has a dedicated YouTube link there as well, where you'll find all of the videos that each of us have created. And I show you that to show you this. I will provide the hyperlink here. Alan Gilbert gave a wonderful presentation a few months ago that walks through getting started using pipe runs and pressure networks. And uh, Alan also walked through the process of assigning pay items within your pipe runs and, and doing the extractions. So this link will also be in the description if you'd like to explore that topic. Okay, at this point, we can address any questions that you may have.